ladies and gentlemen, to It Came From Netflix, here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm taking a look at a horror movie from 2011. That movie is Hostel Part 3. Now, I'd like to tell you guys right now, I have seen the first two Hostel films. The first one was amazing. It really is one of the better horror movies to come out in the past decade or so. Uh, partially because it was different, it was visceral, it was everything a horror film a horror film buff could ever ask for. You know, because it wasn't because it wasn't the same old bullshit. It was genuinely a brand new a brand new premise. And then the ho and then Hostel Two came along and um, and shat on that uh, <laughs> by putting out a lifeless, soulless garbage rehash of Hostel One. And that movie sucked balls. I'm going to tell you guys right now, Hostel, Hostel 2 sucked and was boring. It basically was like a fucking double, you know, whammy. But at least that one was, you know, worthy of being in theaters. Now we have Hostel Part 3, which is a direct-to-video sequel. Um, you could probably count on one hand the number of good horror direct-to-video horror sequels, or just, well, direct-to-video sequels in general. You can probably count on one hand the number of good direct-to-video sequels there have been. So this thing is already starting off really, really poorly. And um, they've opted to kind of sort of toy around with the premise a little bit, and it doesn't sound like it's a good way of toying with the premise. Because, you see, what made the first two films so good and even to a small point made the first two films incredibly believable was that they were in odd they cuz they were in odd mysterious european countries and at least to people in the us uh, stuff like stuff like this could very well happen but hostel part 3 comes right out and says nope we are setting this thing in vegas which um, now means that they have to explain, at least try to explain, how to fuck the very same kind of torture, like torture, like torture operation can work in the U.S. I'm really hoping that they, that, that they do try to explain it. However, I also fear that they are just going to go, no, 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 we are just doing this play along, and uh, that's going to really make the movie kind of suck. I honestly, guys, have no idea if this movie is, is going to be any good, and the only way I'm going to find out is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Hostel Part 3. Wow, guys. This movie was actually starting to build, you know, tension and... Instead of giving us a nice payoff, payoff for that tension, we get just more shit. Yippee. Yes, 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 guys, this movie's only about 20 minutes in, and it is already mind-meltingly boring. I'm kind of hoping for it, for it to pick up, but at, but right now, I kind of have my doubts of this thing ever picking up anytime soon. You know, guys, this is really kind of sad. I really like what they have done with the whole premise of the Hostel films. Like, it honestly is no longer about people paying to torture other people. Now it's basically about an underground gambling, you know, ring who are betting on the outcomes of these Hostel-style tortures. Which sounds like a fantastic premise. Unfortunately, the writing here is so fucking shit that it really is just taking a really cool, cool premise and pissing on it. And that, guys, to me is just a fucking shame. Guys, I am really curious right now. Is anything going to happen in, the, in this fucking movie? I mean, I have been waiting patiently for something of interest to happen in this goddamn movie. I've been waiting for something cool, something promising besides the whole gambling on, you know, torture thing. And this movie has yet to deliver anything interesting. I mean, yes, I totally understand that there's only about a half an hour left, probably. But God damn it, it is going to be a long, torturous fucking half hour if it continues at this slow, tedious, goddamn pace. You know what I mean? You know, guys, in the hands of a competent writer, everything which is going on right now would probably be really interesting. 
Because a competent writer would know how to give us characters we we want to care about. Would give us something, would give us some level of tension, would give us something cool. Instead, we have something here which seems sort of promising, but it sucks because the writing just isn't there. I can't wait for this motherfucker to just end. Thank fuck this goddamn thing is done. Let me shut that off. Well, guys, that was Hostel Part 3, and, um... <laughs> I guess I should say. I, I, I went into this thing expecting it to suck. I really did. Uh, however, I didn't expect it to suck this much. First of all, um, this is, guys, another one of those sequels where I am completely convinced that when it when it was first written, it wasn't supposed to be a sequel. I do not believe this thing was supposed to be a hostile film the moment that the the moment that whoever the fuck wrote it decided to sit down and write it. Partially because um, the uh, premise, as cool as it is, is not hostile. Allow me to explain, guys. Just uh, first of all. I have already mentioned, I mentioned as I was watching the uh, the movie about how this is basically about a ring of people gambling on the deaths of victims, and I really didn't go into detail on that. I'm talking, um, you are able to bet on a little bit of everything. You are able to bet on what kind of, what kind of uh, item is going to be used to kill them, uh, what kind of things are they going to, you know, plead, plead for example, like, example, like, you could bet that they are going to try to bribe, bribe the, uh, you know, killer. You can bet that they are going to try to plead that they have a wife and kids and this and that and so on, so on, so on. You, know, you can you can do all of that. You can bet on all of that and you win. It sounds really cool and probably in the hands of a competent writer who knows how to fucking create decent characters, it would work. But still, that isn't hostile. Hostile. I'm going to give you guys like a summary of, it, of exactly what, exactly what, the fucking hunting hunting club is supposed to be like as was firmly established in the first two films all right you you go and you throw down massive amounts of cash for a for a custom found victim you honestly could you honestly guys could throw down you you could throw down money and the club would find you the gender you want nationality hair color eye color any anything they would go out of their way to try to find a victim and then they tell you when they find it. Then you walk into a small room and your hand-picked victim is strapped to a chair and you get to torture that victim until that victim is no longer alive. That was it. The reason why it was called, the reason why it's called Elite Hunting Club is because you're basically, well, you actually aren't, aren't hunting, hunting your prey as much as torturing, but still close enough. It's not the same thing as sitting down and typing into a laptop how you think the person is going to, to die. It doesn't, it, do, it really doesn't carry the same weight, and it's kind of a slap in the face to everything that, that, was, that was established in the previous two films. Now, if this thing were not called Hostile Part 3, if it, if, if it were maybe treated as its own separate film, well, it would probably still have sucked because we'd still have the same god-awful script. But, again, if we had this very same premise, we put it in the hands of someone who knows how to fucking write then we would have probably had an amazing movie here. We could have had the makings of a whole new franchise. But instead, they opted to hitch it to Hostel, which, uh, honestly, which honestly, guys, Hostel, Hostel was only good for, for, for one movie, and the first sequel kind of sucked. Mind you, I, I totally understand when I started this, I said that the first sequel really sucked. It's looking a hell of a lot better when compared to this goddamn thing. So... Yeah, guys, we have Hostel. We so we have Hostel, which was a great movie. We have Hostel Two, which kind of sucks because it was a fucking rehash. And then we have Hostel Part Three, which is a, a complete slap in the fucking face. Now I'm going to stop talking about uh, why this thing should not have been called Hostel Three. Let's actually just talk about the movie itself. 
let's talk about the writing. One thing I always talk about when it comes to writing is characters. You have to have likable characters, you have to have believable characters, you have to have realistic characters. And uh, again, going back to the first Hostel, that was something which Eli Roth went to painstaking detail to do. You cared about you cared about the main characters in the first Hostel film as they were being tortured or as or as they were escaping their torturers. You cared because he made it a point to make you care. He gave you a reason to care about any of these characters. He gave you a reason to give a shit. And this thing did not do that. Hostel 2 was barely able to fucking do that, but this thing drops drops the ball entirely. There is not a single likable character in this film. I couldn't even tell you a single character's name. Okay, I couldn't because they are all that shallow and that fucking lifeless. No one here has no one here has has any real personality. Allow me to allow me allow me guys to boil down our our main characters for you because this I swear to god is all that the movie gave us. One of them is about to get married. One of them is his best friend. Another one is another one is crippled and is always walking around with a crutch. Another one is in a loveless marriage and is trying and is trying to talk the first guy out of getting married because the guy that he married had because because the guy that because the guy that he married or the or, or well the woman that he married is a bitch and she's put on weight. I swear to God, guys, that's it. Oh, and then we have the friend of one of the hookers that they picked up at a bar or early on in the film, and then we have a guy who was kidnapped at the very start of the at the very start of the film that they never bothered to torture at all over the course of the film. So he's just sitting in a cell for the entire goddamn movie. Um, and guys, I swear that is it for character depth. And then everybody else is working for the hunting club and. <laughs> That really is all they have for 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 character as well is they work for the hunting club. Ta da! Uh, <laughs> this movie has no fucking soul. This movie has no heart. This movie has no spirit. And again, guys, the premise here would have been amazing. Perhaps maybe if we would have had characters who who kind of mattered. Perhaps, perhaps maybe if perhaps maybe if the story itself were written better. Because guys, um, it really is just. Bachelor party, and then somebody's missing, and then they and then they go to find him, and then they kind of stumble into the hunting club because he was part of the hunting because he was killed in the hunting club, and so on, so on, so on. And it just doesn't work. It's boring. It's plotting, and it's tedious. I would love it if somebody could take this premise and make something good out of it. And it wouldn't even be that fucking difficult. If you know how to write a story, you could easily write something with this very premise and make it fucking work. And make it and make it work incredibly well. Perhaps honestly, maybe even write it so that way it's good enough to put in theaters instead of tossing it out on DVD and Blu-ray and well, apparently now on Netflix. Uh, so, y yeah, I mean, come on, guys. It wouldn't be that fucking tough, all right? The writing here is just is just a disaster from start to finish because, because we have terrible pacing, we have characters who suck, nothing here fucking works, um, and of course when all and of course when all of that fails guys the acting is the acting is bound to suck now the acting here doesn't doesn't suck flat out I mean everybody here bless them they are fucking trying okay but you can only do so much with a script that is just this rancid and this bad so the acting so the acting is okay which is almost a fucking miracle when you kind of think about it um <laughs> However, though, that honestly still, still, though, is not saying much because that once more shows you how bad the writing is when the actors are really only able to put out, put out something that is kind of passable because all of them were trying their absolute hardest to make this shitty script work. So nobody here, honestly, uh, so no one here turned in a bad showing, but nobody here turned in anything that I am, that I am going to remember in a week. Nobody here has turned in anything I am going to fucking remember tomorrow. The acting here is ultimately for, you know, gettable, but then again, that's because they're all playing characters who are ultimately for, for fucking gettable. So yeah, guys, the acting here, I honestly just sort of have to give a pass to because everybody tried and everyone turned in a halfway decent showing, but no one turned in anything ultimately special. Special effects. Um, <laughs> 
one big issue with this movie, uh, and it's probably because it, it's probably because it's a it's probably an incredibly low 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 budget film. I didn't bother to look to look at the budget, but um, for a movie that's part of the Hostel series, you know, a franchise that prided itself on tons and tons of gore and violence, this thing is incredibly tame because almost everything had to be done off camera. Uh, except for the except for the after effects, so you know, like, so we basically get to see like, so we get to see like a fire axe go through, go 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 through a corpse's skull, uh, and we get to see a knife get plunged into, or well, we get to see a knife like trying to like just just sort of like trying to like chop off a fucking arm, but all but all of that is done incredibly quick, and it's done, and all and everything else is is just all done off camera. So, okay, yes, we actually do, so we actually do, do get to see a person's face after, you know, it's been peeled off of their head, but we don't actually get to see the skin getting peeled off of, off of, off of the head, which would have been a fantastic effect. It would probably also have been a really cheap effect, because I know of low-budget films that have been, that have been able to do that, and at least do it somewhat somewhat well in fact guys i will say this they did that very same effect in slaughtered vomit dolls and made it kind of work and that movie was being made with next to nothing so what fucking excuse does this piece of shit have special effects here guys were just fucking lazy all right they basically were trying to cut they were trying to cut you know corners and ultimately it makes the film feel incredibly cheap and shitty um <laughs> Music here, I do not remember a single piece of music in this in this fucking movie. Camera work, camera work is okay. Camera work and no, no, I really, I, I, I honestly am not able to uh, praise uh, lighting. I will get to that in just a sec. Camera work is probably one of the only things here which was done competently because, well, you know, because guys, I'm just going to tell you this much. The camera's there, the camera's focused, and we never see like boom mics or, you know, anything else. It works, all right. Let's just let's just fucking move on. It works. Lighting, though, uh, there are a lot of instances where the movie is just too fucking dark in terms of lighting, where you can't see shit. There was at one point a a a, a victim in in their cell, and they were being wrestled out of their cell, and we basically were greeted to a black screen because there was no goddamn lighting. And guys, I don't care if you are if, if if you're trying to make your film look gritty, a little just just a little bit of light there would have would have still kept it you know gritty you know looking. Instead, we get darkness there and nothing more, and that doesn't fucking work when you're trying to build gritty gritty atmospheric tension. It doesn't fucking fly. So guys, yes, lighting here sucks. The writing here was shit. The camera work was okay. The soundtrack ultimately... Oh, I don't fucking remember a thing about, about the fucking soundtrack. The acting here was just barely passable. Guys, when all is said and done, am I able to recommend Hostel Part 3? No. Fuck no. Go out and watch the first two and pretend and pretend that this shit piece never fucking existed. Because that is exactly what I am going to... To, to do as soon as I'm done filming here. I am going to pretend I never watched watched this fucking thing, and I'm just going to have to ignore every time that Netflix informs me that I watched Hostel Part 3, so I might like these, these shitty films. So yeah, guys, even if you have Netflix, don't bother with this thing. This movie's a piece of shit, and it should never have been made, and I don't see any reason for anybody to fucking watch it. Now, I'm going to go and watch the first Hostel, because god damn it, I wanted, I wanted to see something, something like Hostel, because after all, it's right there in the goddamn title, and I did not get that. So I'm going to go watch Hostel and be fucking reminded about, and, and, and be fucking reminded of what these movies used to be like. So yes, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.